Trading Addicts, what's up? This is your man, Option Addict, uh, coming at you with a little bit of a, uh, a market recap video of sorts. Uh, typically, you guys know I, I post our, uh, our TA live session, the recording, uh, on the website as kind of a market wrap, if you will, for those who weren't able to attend. But no recording tonight, so I figured I'd kind of go out of my way and just do a quick little recap here just to keep you all abreast of what we talked about earlier today, uh, this morning, and just update you on you know trade ideas and whatnot that we, were, that we discussed. So the S&Ps inside of this uh, falling wedge type formation uh, you recovered off the lows as usual. You know we didn't really see a whole lot of follow through as we took out last week's lows. In fact, we're kind of right back up to around that area. Uh, as far as where we are right now, we're still a good distance off of what my initial target was for the S&Ps in this correction, which was 12.75. And according to the McClellan, I don't think the uh, the weakness or the the downside is done quite yet. On an intraday level, we looked at this McClellan and saw that the intraday reading was about negative 50, you know, give or take a few points. And you know, we closed at you know negative, let's call it 44, which means we're, we're still a good distance off of any kind of an oversold reading here, which makes me uncomfortable to just issue the you know go all out, buy this dip, this is the spot type of uh, an area. I don't think that's I don't think this is quite it yet. But I did start to nibble today, you know, so I'll I'll, I'll throw that out there. Got a couple of longs and we'll we'll look at those in just a minute. But, you know, aside from that, like I don't like I said, I don't think the timing's here at that it's the absolute bottom, but I do think this is a shaping out to be a tradable low. Order flows looked really, really good on the day. Not only that, but we had a lot of inside days in various different asset classes, uh, including copper, which I've, I've broken this down into about a three-day chart. And you know we're, we're a little soft right now uh, after hours, but you can see the, the bottom that's trying to take hold here. Um, you know, got a nice little setup of rising lows, a, a really good kind of a, to me, like an inverse head and shoulders pattern that's setting up down here near support. If you look at this just on a daily chart, you'll see exactly what I'm looking at here. You know, bigger head and shoulders pattern, but around this level of support, which gets back to the one year chart, good level of support right through here. You see, we're, we're trying to carve out a little bit of a bottom as far as what I'm what I can tell so not confirmed quite yet but if we get a nice little move up into you know above 4 22 23 24 I, I think the better copper looks here in the short term you know probably see a move back up to about 435 or so give or take so structurally we're looking pretty good not only that but I think the most positive thing that we talked about here today and we've been following this relationship for the last couple of months but it's the bullish divergence going on here in emerging markets you look at that EEM really really strong today and also the the fact that S&P's you know in the last month are just off of today a new relative low while the EEM and the FXI and a lot of these others are not you know they're looking pretty good I mean that's a strong bullish divergence that's setting up through here now keep in mind you know the backdrop of that we've had in terms of concern has been all throughout the last you know f four or five months there's been a real bearish divergence in emerging markets in China and and what have you big bearish divergence s and P's have been just flying higher without the support of emerging markets it hasn't really mattered much right because we've had a quantitative easing run here in uh, domestic equities but now the fact that it seems like the emerging markets are finding some footing and they're starting to look a little bit more attractive uh, I kinda like that for stocks in the intermediate term so I think what it's all about here in the next couple of days maybe a couple of weeks is just trying to pick the spot you know of where you're gonna look to start buying because uh, that's like I said I think if this relationship keeps up I think it's a good sign for equities now we uh, let's see we've talked about that um, like I said ultimately in the S&P's I'd like to see 1275 I think by the time we get there that VIX will have seen one last pop up here to about 23 or so and you know if emerging markets still continue to hold up and the copper doesn't rotate to a new relative low then I like the way things have, have set up but I think we're still a little ways off I think we have a tradable low for at least a couple of days here in the S&P's but that's about all I'm gonna call it Here's what we talked about in terms of uh, stocks and setups earlier today. Um, on the heel of the emerging markets discussion, we talked about stocks like MTL that are down near support levels, uh, GGB, uh, PBR, you know, if we're looking at some of these South American equities. And then uh, in China, C-Trip is at a great spot, been trading really, really well. And Asia, you know, two of my favorite names down here, the way they've coiled up and in some of these patterns. Also, just some, you know, 
general setups, you know, the breakout setup here in uh, HK, in SWN, uh, which looked pretty similar to the structure in PBR. We did a, a in-depth, you know, diagnostic look at this chart, which I think looks pretty good, you know, at least for a decent move on up to about 43 or so. Uh, CRK, which is coiled up all nice and neat to a nice little apex here, holding up above that 200-day moving average. Speaking of which, FLIR, kind of same coiling pattern, looking ready to break on out. Uh, we spent a lot of time on this Rubicon setup, RBCN, which looks really good on a trade above about 25 and a half. MMR, uh, nice little bottom hammered out here today. Polycom, PLCM, which I think looks pretty good. And then also Win, Bank of America, and Baidu. Now, like I said, we're at a tradable low here, so I wouldn't be married to any of the positions here, but structurally, with as good as they look, I think if the market were to see at least just a multi-day rally to reset some of these oversold levels, I think these are some of the stocks that I would put on the forefront of your list. Uh, not only that, we've got a couple of small cap setups that we uh, added to the list tonight. Stocks like uh, INWK. Damn it. INWK. There I can spell. H high short interest stocks that have held up pretty well. Uh, IPAS off the watch list, ABAT, nice little bottom formed here today. Speaking of form, FORM off the watch list looked really good. A lot of volume coming in. Uh, UTSI, another name off the watch list, which looks good. It's been coiling up here for the last couple of months. I think getting ready for a nice little move. Uh, we can look at uh, HDY, the inverse head and shoulder setup here, and GMXR. You know, those are some of the names that we had looked at earlier today. So, uh, structurally, it looks like we might have a tradable low. I would have liked to have seen the S&Ps finish off near their lows and open up lower tomorrow. I think that would have been the perfect buy the dip scenario for an intermediate term time frame. But um, the way it's set up here, the fact that we haven't reached a real strong oversold signal on the McClellan... I'm just kind of nibbling into longs, maybe looking for a multi-day move higher, at which point we'll look to take profits. I, I'd, I'd prefer to see the S&Ps hit 1275 before I really start buying things up, and that's going to take a little bit more time to develop. So, Anyways, guys, hopefully that helps here in the short term. Uh, TA Live will be scheduled tomorrow as usual. Recordings will continue on from here, just a little bit of a technical glitch and a little bit of a recording to help uh, for those that weren't able to attend. Also, I've been toying with the notion of rather than doing written content, just doing daily video updates like this. So let me know your feedback if you're interested. I'd be more than happy to produce these. and might save myself a little bit of time. So anyways, guys, uh, that's just a couple of ideas that I have and some setups. Thank you for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys all bright and early tomorrow morning. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.